when the growth look good on you, best believe they wanna screw now. I've been trying to climb, devil threw me in the dark. Baby, don't be insecure, you can still go make a mark like. Blow. Could never let them drain my soul now. Blow. Table turning like doorknobs, wow. Blow. I think I'm about to set sail. I'm a walking, living legend, walking with my chest yeah. now. Life keeps dealing me cards. I keep Yes, 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 people. You know what time it is. You know what it is. <clears throat> I have got a bit of a glandular problem. So excuse me for my voice. Um, it's, I'm getting sick. Liverpool making me sick. Um, <laughs> before we dive into that, guys, please make sure you smash that like button. And please make sure, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We, As I said, we are still on the road to 300 subscribers. Ah, okay. I don't even want to make this too long, to be honest with you. Um, I am in a lot of pain. I am in a lot of pain. But I said, you know what? The the, the streets needed this. The streets needed this. <sighs> there you go, guys. Let me let me even take this off for you, so you guys so you guys can see the the full magnitude of what went down yesterday. As you guys can see, full time Liverpool two, Real Madrid five. Biggest Liverpool's biggest defeat. Uh, at Anfield in the in the Champions League, especially under Jurgen Klopp. I mean, you know, we're breaking records, man. We're breaking records. You know what I mean? We're doing our thing as per usual. Jurgen Klopp. You know what I mean? The the man, the savior, every everything, everything. And I think this epitomized it. You know, to be honest. But you know what? This season, all jokes aside, that kind of result last night. It it's like it wasn't even surprising. Like if this was a couple of years ago and we got smashed like that five two. You would have been like, wow, like, you know, where did that come from? You know, et cetera, et cetera. This wasn't even too surprising. Even the fact that, it, like, the whole game went exactly how our season went. You know, they, it's like Liverpool are very good at foreplay. Very, very good at foreplay. They tease you. They bring you in. They're like, yeah, okay, cool. Um, we're going to, um, we're, we're supposedly going to do the deed. But the reality is we're not going to. We're actually not going to, you know, we last couple of games, everyone kept talking about, you know, Liverpool and the way they've been playing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and again, people just got overexcited and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Great that we are winning, 100 percent. You know, do you know what I mean? As I said on the Jerry James show, you know, it, it's great that we are that we won those last two games and it was good that we got the clean sheets and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, those two games, I just looked at them in isolation. You know, um, there was still a lot of improvements needed to be made, even in those two games, you know, played against a very, very bad Everton side who didn't really show up, played against a Newcastle team with 10 men, and they looked better um, than Liverpool with 10 men, had a few chances if they had actually put those away, different type of game, you know. Um, and then we come up against uh, Real Madrid, who obviously are Real Madrid, you know, people saying, oh, Real Madrid haven't really been good this season and blah, blah. We would, we would actually kill to be in their position right now. If if they're not if they haven't been good this season, what the hell has happened to us? Do you know what I mean? So when people kept saying, I was like, I mean, I, I, I'm sure they're still doing well in the league. You know, we we can't just because they're not doing good, they're not doing anywhere as bad as us. No, like not even we're not even on the same planet. Uh, you know, at this current moment in time. So you know, to sit there and and say stuff like that, and look, at the end of the day, I, I get it from fans. You know, the hope, and I always say it's the hope that kills you, but. You know, it's that hope, that optimism, you know, thinking that we can do this, that and the third and we've got Darwin Nunes and we've got the Anfield crowd. And, you know, the, the game in itself with, with the way that it kind of panned out, you know, that I, I was and this is why I like to sleep on, you know, doing these kind of um, post-match reviews and stuff like that, because you're not so emotional necessarily after, you know, after uh, the game and stuff like that. For me... I mean, you could place the blame on Klopp. I mean, he ain't the one playing, but you could place the blame on him in terms of the in-game management. Um, I think well, he mentioned it after the game about, you know, the fast start and stuff like that. You know, we, we, we went 2-0 up, which was obviously fantastic. But it's almost like he's forgotten about Real Madrid. It's almost like he's forgotten that you're playing against Real Madrid. I, myself, who are, who's watching this on, you know, via TV, I can see that Real Madrid are not getting out of second gear at this current. Well, they're not even, at that time, they weren't even out of first gear. But they they then stepped it up to second gear, which still looked like a bit of a stroll. It didn't look like there was no panic. Now, me watching that, I would have maybe tried to think to myself, again, I'm not a manager. 
and it's easy to sit here and say this now after the fact. You know, at the end of the day, it's, it, the game's already done and dusted how it panned out. But the reality is you're playing against Real Madrid. You could not keep up that level of intensity for 90 minutes. That's first and foremost. I know he's not dumb enough to think that. So the reality is what you're probably trying to do is have this fast start, but then score more goals within that fast start. So maybe go like 4-0 up, you know, potentially. And then, you know, Madrid can't even get back. But the, but it's like game management that might, from the players as well, by the way. This ain't just from Jurgen Klopp. At the end of the day, yes, he's the one who's picking the team and he is the one who should be giving out these orders. But the players on the pitch should also see these kind of things. And you, you should be getting a feel of the game. Like, you should be understanding that, you know, Real Madrid don't even really look like they, they are trying at this current moment in time. They don't look like they've really stepped up any gears. It, it's kind of, you know, it's kind of like they've just kind of said, you know, it's, it's like I said on the Jerry James show, it's like, you know, you, you've it's like a being in the ring and it's like we punched them unexpectedly the first time and they're like, oh, wow, it didn't hurt. It just unexpected. So, of course, you get caught off guard. Then we hit them again and it's almost like they were like, all right, you know what, that's the last time. That, that, that That's the last time I'm going to make you make, make, make you, um, who, uh, make you make me look stupid. Like, it's, it's, it's going to look like I'm shit when the reality is I'm not. And, I think that um, Real Madrid just, just the experience. I'll, I'll be honest, man. There isn't really much other words to really say about it. It is genuinely just the experience of Real Madrid. Uh, you know, the know-how, the understanding of when we're in these kind of situations, what we need to do. Uh, don't panic. We've still got world-class players on the pitch, still got world-class players on the bench. You know, we don't need to worry. World-class manager, all these kind of little things. And it's just, they just never looked phased at any point. Like, they, even when they went 2-0 down, it was annoying me because I was like, Yo, Liverpool better gonna need to score like two more goals. Like they're going to need to score two because whether or not I felt that Real Madrid could come back, I just knew guaranteed they would score, and then they scored. You know, Vinicius Junior with that beautiful goal, beautiful, beautiful. You can blame whoever you want to blame. I mean, I know a lot of people obviously blaming Gomez and whatever. So oh, you know, get touched. I, I hear it. Yes, if you want to do that, then you can do that. For me, I was just like, it was such a good goal. It was past Allison before he even knew it, you know. Um, then you go over to, you know, the second goal. The second goal was like a multitude of people. I mean, again, I saw people blaming Gomez. I was like, you know what's so mad? There's two players I would have blamed in that sequence. And one of them wasn't really even Gomez. It was more by Cetic and Allison, Because by Cetic, for being a clown and losing the ball in the middle, when he should have just passed it, instead of far and around, should know his surroundings. He should have known who's behind him. Scan the pitch before you before you start doing stupidness. But he didn't. He lost the ball. Once he's lost the ball, the whole defense is under attack. So, you know, it's one of those kind of things. And once that through ball's then obviously been played, Gomez, again, quick enough to get back, to track back. He, he obviously saw the danger. Once he's seen the danger, it was like, okay, cool. <sighs> I can't really even say it was like a Gomez thing like that. I, I don't really look at that. Like, obviously, I get you can give a man angles and stuff like that. But I'm looking at Bajetic first and foremost. Before, like Gomez is probably the, the the last one I'm looking at in this list of people. Like it will probably have to be Bajetic, um, Allison, then um, you know Gomez because just because of the sequence of what happened. If Bajetic doesn't lose that ball, which he shouldn't, like just pass the ball simply, bro. Um, you know it is what it is. Cool. Um, and then Allison again. Allison too casual. He is so bloody casual all the time, bro. Like. You never have that level. It's like, you, he reminds you of Van Dyke in that level of like, yeah, man, I can do it. So, you know, I'll do it when I want to do it. And it's like, bro, like sometimes you do need to show a level of urgency, man. This casual behavior that you do bring at times, just because you save, man, you know, every now and again, like that's not going to always back you up in these situations. That like, you're too overconfident. Always, Ali is so overconfident, so overconfident. Like, and it's not a good thing, if I'm being totally honest with you, because I don't need you to be this overconfident. Do you know what I mean? I don't need you to think, that, yeah, that's just a simple part. He does that so many times, you know, so many times. Like, And, you know, we saw in the Wolves game, you know, again, mistakes. Like, Ali has these mistakes in him. And again, not too bash Ali. Ali is still one of the best keepers, if not the best keeper in the world. But he does have his flaws. That isn't like, everyone does. but And he has his flaws. And his flaws, at times, they're just too pivotal. Like, you just, it's just, I don't know, man. You, you do some very, very weird stuff at times. And I and I never quite understand, like, why you do, do that. Like, why did you have to do that? Like, 
why can't you just be normal and just pass the ball? Why did you have to, you know, like, or didn't you look up and see to your left was probably a better option as opposed to the same position that Vinicius was running in? I, I, I don't know, man. I don't know. It, it is very, very, very weird. We take a look here. Yesterday, last night, I called these guys dumb and dumber. I mean, they were just, as a whole, Van Dijk and Gomez, that was poor. That was poor. Van Dijk's supposed to be the leader. Nah, man. That, that last night's performance was 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 crap. You know, um, uh, Gomez, no aerial jewels. He didn't battle for any. Um, Gomez had three ground jewels, only won one of them. You know, that, that, that's kind of crazy. Van Dijk didn't win his one. He won his aerial duel. Van Dijk lost the ball 11 times. You know, uh, the accurate passes is pretty good. Long balls. Van Dijk made eight long balls and only completed three. Gomez made three and only completed one. You know, it it, it doesn't really, you know, that, that doesn't screen to me, you know, good performance, if I'm being totally honest with you. And just in within the game in itself, like Benzema dropping deep and having... Um, you know, Rodrigo on, on that right-hand side and having Vinicius on that left-hand side, it just seemed like they were able to work the back four very, very well. You know, they were able to find these pockets of spaces. And from there, it just became, it's like, it just became difficult. You know, with Benzema dropping deep, you know, having that, okay, not really someone to really mark mark at times, you know, because Benzema's not just going to stay up there. Having Vinicius in that pockets of space between, you know, a Trent and a Gomez, that would then cause an issue then for Gomez. You know, Rodrigo was like kind of a free roll. He was bouncing in around. You know, he was just on that right-hand side. He was just everywhere kind of thing in that kind of, you know, in that quadrant. And, yo, they were, they were at times, I just felt like they were finding pockets of space. And obviously, when you've got this guy, like, in the middle, you know, world-class, you know, midfielder in, you know, Luka Modric, you know... <laughs> It's actually crazy. Dribble attempts, four, complete three, ground jewels, <laughs> six ground jewels, four, one, only lost possession 11 times, won all his aerial jewels, which is crazy. One tackle, one interception, you know, fouled once, like big chances created one. But he just in his overall game, again, that level of experience, understanding, you know, when he picked up the ball at times, it was always like he would pick up the ball and it just felt like everything was calm now. They were giving him the ball in tight spaces, like tight, tight spaces, bro. And I was thinking, yeah, he can't get out of this. We've got to nick the ball. And he'd get out of it. But then am I surprised? It's Luka Modric. Of course not. Of course not, man. Modric knows what he's doing at the end of the day. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you know, all, all, all of these kind of little things. And again, all of these are like components obviously led up to the, um, the way that the manner of our defeat at the end of the day, you know, just not, not keeping up that level of intensity. Um, again, we were very good in that first 20 minutes, if you want to call it that. Um, or, you know, when we went 2 new up, I thought to myself, okay, cool. You, you know what I mean? The Qatar mistake. But again, you just never saw Real Madrid panic. And Michael Owen said something on BT Sport. And I was like, yeah, it's actually true. Like, again, risk versus reward. At the end of the day, Liverpool, the way that Liverpool play with that level of risk with the high line and stuff like that, the problem is, you continue playing that in, in a game. And if you if it doesn't work, you get picked off. And when you get picked off, it looks awful. Like It, it doesn't even look like it's good. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, even when... It, for, forget, cool, they've gotten to 2-2. I can live with that. So it's wrong with you at the end of the day. I can, I can kind of deal with that. Maybe you drop a bit deeper now. Maybe it isn't so gung-ho because at the end of the day, they've now got a foothold in the game. By half time, they've definitely got a foothold in the game. You know, they're, they're a lot more comfortable now in this game. They've got their, all right, cool. <clears throat> We've got the two goals. Even though there's no away goals, they probably would think, yeah, we're calm and kind of just being here at 2-2 and then going back to the Bernabeu. But at the same time, we'll know that if we do get our chances, as long as we can finish them, then, you know, we're good to go. But we're we're kind of like, you just keep playing the same way. I, I, it, it, uh, like, honestly, it just baffles me sometimes. And I keep saying this about Jurgen Klopp, like, hence the reason why, I've stopped recently because I just said, you know what? It, it is what it is. Klopp is always going to be Klopp. People, you know, and there's going to be your Klopp lovers, you guys out there who can't say a bad word about the guy, you know, kind of thing. And I'm like, this is the, the same, like, this guy's never going to change. He's never, ever going to change, bro. Like, why would you want this to continue? And when I mean continue, I'm just talking about it doesn't even matter if we, like, next season he gets some money and he does this and he does that. His tactics, his style, everything's just going to be the same. 
You need something different. You need to be a manager who can understand that in certain games, you do need to play a different way at times. And even if you're going to start out with the way that you normally play, then at least in mid-game, change it a little bit. It doesn't have to always be the same thing like over and over again. Like it's just boring. It's so, so boring. So boring. Like, and I'm just tired of it. Like I'm genuinely just tired. I'm tired of him anyway. And I just need him to go. But I'm just tired of the sheer fact that people keep defending it. And I'm just like, guys, what are you defending? We need to get out of this mentality of oh, well, what he's done. Forget what he's done. What he's done is irrelevant. It's irrelevant. Do you know what I mean? It's so irrelevant. Like, it's just annoying, to be honest with you, because we get in these kind of games, and these games are just the same games all the time, like against these kind of opposition. Now, I'm not saying go out there and we needed to beat Real Madrid 5 2. We could have still lost. But at least if I can see, like, okay, yo, we did try to play a different way. We kept it tight. You know, they were just really clinical on the break and stuff. No problem. No one's getting onto you for that. But this, you just said, yeah, let me just run it back 4 3 3. Same team as the last game. Yeah, we're going to just continue, try and continue doing this, that, and the third. We don't need to change anything. Let's just, oh, come on, man. Playing against Real Madrid, this ain't Newcastle. This ain't Everton. Like, what do you think this is? I don't get it. Like, what do you think this is? Like, you, you, do you think we're playing the team on the same level of the teams that we've just played? Like, and you think we could just come in and just play the same way? Like, that, that was just supposed to happen. We just come in and play the same way that we played against Newcastle, even though that was dead. And we played the same way as, as we did against Everton. And you expected the same result. Come on, man. That's childish, man. That's childish. You know, and, and and that's the thing about Jurgen Klopp is that these are the kind of games and these are the kind of the in-game management that he does not have within games anyway, just in a general sense. Forget even last night, just in a general sense. He just doesn't really have that kind of in-game management. And, you know, that's always going to be, you know, the, the frustrating thing. But, you know, ultimately, you know, first leg, 5-2. Um, going to need four goals to go through. Um, can we get four goals without reply? I, I, I'm going to say with Liverpool, we've got a 1% chance of that happening. Um, I think Real Madrid have got this tie kind of sewn up now. I think we might probably even win at the Bernabeu, um, but I just don't think it'll be enough um, for us to go through. I think Real Madrid will get a goal or two. Once they do that, the tie is literally over, done and dusted. Um, but it's a disappointing game. It's a very, very disappointing game. Um, disappointing performances from everyone as a whole. Um, as a whole, I think I gave it like a zero out of ten. I was like, yeah, that like you can't be losing five two. I don't care who you're playing. You can't lose five two. You know, at Anfield, playing the way that you played. And the only good thing about that game was the sheer fact that you had a ten minute spell, or sorry, a, up until went two nil. So what's that like a 20, 25 minute spell of a ninety minute game? That that that's all you can show for the ninety minute game is that first 20, 25 minutes. Come on, man. Again, like I said, that's childish, man. That's so childish. Like I'm, I'm really not trying to, I'm not really trying to hear that. To be honest with you, um, the team have to do a lot better. Again, as I said, it's not just on Jurgen Klopp though. It isn't just on him. It can't just be on him. He ain't playing the game. It's on the players as well. Being able to understand that, understand what's going on on the pitch. Being able to understand that maybe we don't do certain things. You know, it's leadership from someone, from someone on that pitch to just kind of understand what was going on. You know. We 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 supposedly got all of these leaders on the pitch. So if so, let me see that. Let me see your leadership skills being put to good use. I don't want out. You know, everyone everyone's like, yeah, Jordan Henderson when he's shouting and making up bare noise. Uh, you, you know, so let me see that in a game like this. Don't hide away, Jordan. Don't hide away, which is what he did. He just hid away. Shook coming up against their midfield. Shook. All of them were shook. You could tell. You could you could sense the fear that we had in the team. You could just sense it. Hence the reason why that fast start was what what is the only thing because of how Klopp is was the only way Liverpool were going to win because they couldn't win playing ball they couldn't win any other way they had to just unexpected 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 as soon as it got real yo it was game done you could just sense the fear in the entire team you know um, Baiteta is probably the better midfielder you know what I mean even with his mistake um, but he wasn't that great it was probably one of his worst games. Um, or what, not one of his better games, shall we say. Um, but it's becoming a theme with him. Big games, he ain't nowhere to be seen. Real Madrid now, um, Manchester City, um, you know, he's playing in these games and we're trusting him in these kind of games. But he's, he's, he's kind of drowning a little bit, a little bit. I'm not saying he was the worst, but he definitely wasn't that good. Definitely wasn't that good. People kept telling me, oh, he was the most progressive. Okay, thank you for telling me that he was super progressive. That didn't seem to help the team in any way, shape or form. Um, 
Fabinho and Hendo are Fabinho and Hendo. Just they are who they are. As I said, with Dumb and Dumber at the back, they were just appalling. You know, they, I expect leadership from Van Dyke, so I was very disappointed in the sheer fact that he wasn't really bringing that, you know, in the game in itself. Trent and Robbo, you know, Ali, worst probably, but uh, alongside Joe Gomez, probably the worst performer, you know, on the pitch. Darwin Nunes was quiet as well. A bit unfair as well because, you know, in that second half, we just wasn't getting, I think Klopp mentioned it, we just wasn't getting the ball out to him enough. So he just became isolated. He wasn't doing anything. He just wasn't doing anything after a while. So, and I even forgot that he was still on the pitch when he came up. I was like, right, shit, I forgot. The owner is even still here. Has he even touched the ball for the last like 10, 15 minutes? Cody Gappo, again, another one, started brightly. He, I, I promise you, you, you would not have known that he was still on the pitch. You definitely wouldn't have known. You know, he, he was, again, he was so non existent after a while that it, it, it was like having 10 minutes. It was definitely like having 10 men. I didn't even notice that he was even still around, you know. Um, but at the end of the day, man, it is what it is at the end of the day. 5-2 um, defeat. Um, I think we go into our next game against Crystal Palace. So, obviously, you know, we're going to try and make amends and stuff like that. But at least now everyone can shut up about Liverpool being back. And let's just take every game as it comes, one at a time, in isolation, instead of looking too far forward. You know, we was all getting gassed. Yeah, top four. We're in good form. Yo, let's just chill for a second. You know, I'm seeing that that hum that we got humbled last night. Yeah, I mean, obviously that doesn't affect our top four um, chances, of course, because it's in the Champions League. But we got humbled last night. Who knows the kind of knock-on effect? It's going to be interesting to see how these boys react to a defeat like that. I am expecting a reaction against, excuse me, against Crystal Palace. I am expecting a reaction. So we'll obviously wait and see. But guys, look. Make sure you smash the like. Make sure you um, subscribe to the channel. Um, yeah, like I said, I've got a bit of a glandular problem. So this might be my last video of the week. Um, but I will let you guys know. Um, but yeah, make sure you obviously tune into the Jerry James show. Uh, big up my guy, Roms. Big up my guy, Ish. Um, there's nothing really else to even really say, man. You know, this this is exactly what we're dealing with. Humbled against Real Madrid. Hey, Amen. I think life can be a humbler, man. I'm G. I'm humble.